In this video, I'm going to show you a four-step process to determining the quark composition of any specific particle. So starting off, you have to ask yourself, is this a meson or a baryon? By the way, just a quick reminder, if you are ever given a lepton, that's a trick question, because leptons are fundamental particles, they can't be broken down into quarks. So examples of leptons include electrons, muons, and neutrinos, or their antiparticles, so positrons, antimuons, and antineutrinos. None of these fall, fall under that category, so they're not trick questions. Moving on then, the first question you need to ask yourself is, are these mesons or baryons? The reason for that is because mesons are made up of a quark and anti-quark pair, whereas baryons are made up of three quarks. So for example, in this first one, K0 meson, I'm just going to write out here, this is a meson. Um, like I said in the name of the particle, a K0 meson. Step number two, you want to ask yourself three different questions. What's the charge, what's the baryon number, and what's the strangeness of the particle? Now, the charge of a K0 meson, well, it specifically tells you um, it's a K0 and not a K- minus or a K plus meson, and that means that the charge is equal to zero. Question number three you want to ask yourself is, what's the baryon number? So only baryons have a baryon number of one, and antibaryons have a baryon number of minus one. That means that anything that's not a baryon or an antibaryon, it has a baryon number of zero. In this case, this is a meson, so it has a baryon number of zero. Lastly, you need to ask yourself about the uh, strangeness. Well, strangeness is a bit of a finicky one because if a particle does have strangeness, it will tell you specifically in the question. If it doesn't tell you it has strangeness in the question, you always assume that it has a strangeness of zero. Here it tells you the neutral kaon has a strangeness of plus one. Straight off the bat, we know that a strange quark has a strangeness of minus one, and the anti-quark for that, an anti-strange quark, has everything the opposite. So it has a charge of plus one over three e, it has a baryon number of minus a third, and it has a strangeness of plus one. That means that one of the particles, or one of the quarks, of the K0 meson has to be an anti-strange quark in order to form that strangeness of plus one. Okay, so now that we know that it has an anti-strange quark, if we think about it, an anti-strange quark has a baryon number of minus a third, strangeness of plus one, and a charge of plus one over three e. However, we want to balance it out so that it now has a charge of zero, and a baryon number of zero. That means the remaining quark, which by the way has to be a normal quark and not an anti-quark because we've already taken into account the anti-quark that this meson has. So the remaining um, sort of particle has to be a quark and it'll actually be a down quark. It doesn't matter which order you put it, anti-strange down or down anti-strange, but the reason it's a down quark is because you can take away one over three e to balance it out and create zero charge just like we need. And you can add a third to the minus a third barrier number to balance out the barrier number, so it's now zero. On top of that, the strangeness would also be positive one because, well, the down quark has no effect on the strangeness and the anti-strange particle quark already has a strangeness of plus one. So that matches everything there. Let's now repeat that process with um, a different particle. So I'm just going to write strangeness here and we're just going to follow this four-step process one more time. So... For this next one, it's a pi plus meson. So the fact that it's a meson means it's a combination of a quark and anti-quark. On top of that, we know the charge is going to be equal to 1 because it's a positively charged meson. We know the baryon number is going to be equal to 0 because it's not a baryon, it's a meson. We know the strangeness is also going to be 0 because it hasn't told us anything about the strangeness in the question. So what combination of quark and anti-quark gives us a charge of 1, a baryon number of 0, and strangeness of 0? Well, I think you should use the up quark. But then on top of that, you need an extra charge of 1 over 3e. That's where an anti-down quark would come in useful. And this works out because an anti-down quark would also have a baryon number of minus a third. So these will add together to give you a total baryon number of 0. These will add together to give you a charge of 1. And the strangeness would also be 0. Since it fits all three criteria and it's a quark anti-quark pair, up anti-down is the correct answer in this case. So let's write that down, up anti-down. By the way, for this one, um, I believe it was the anti-strange and the uh, down quark. Moving on to a proton now. So step question number one, is this a baryon or a meson? It's a baryon, meaning it has th three quarks in its composition. What's the charge of a proton? That's step number two. Well, that's one. What's the baryon number of a proton? It's one. And what's the strangeness? It's zero, because again, it hasn't told us anything about the strangeness in the question. So what combination of three quarks, of these three quarks, sorry, gives you um, these valuable pieces of data. Well, we know we definitely have to include an up quark. If we include two up quarks, that gives us a charge of four over three, which is just over one. But then if we balance that out with one down quark, then that gives you a charge of three over three E, 
which is a child of positive one. That's what we want. Let's check if up, up, down fills in the rest of the criteria. So it have a binary number of a third plus a third plus a third. That's good. And the strangers would also be zero. Since it fits all three criteria and it's a combination of three quarks, that's what tells you that a proton has up, up, down as its quark composition. A bit of a bonus, by the way, an antiproton would actually have anti-up, anti-up, anti-down. But yeah, that's everything for this question. Be sure to leave a like if this video helped and subscribe. Try to remember this four-step process and I'm sure you'll be fine with all these questions. Thanks for watching, I hope this video helped. If you have any tutoring inquiries, be sure to visit my website, www.excelleneducation.co.uk. It's on the first link in the description too.